Hello everybody. Hi there. How are you all doing today? It's November the 2nd, about 2 p.m. Central Standard Time here in Manitoba, Canada. And we're going to do a technical analysis on Bitcoin. And there are going to be a few topics that we'll specifically focus on today. And these topics will basically be how to compare or gauge momentum and strength. And also we'll be talking about a 3-day moving average crossover for the RSI and the MACD and how it has impacted things before. And we'll also compare it to other coins as well. So let's get into this technical analysis. Hope you guys had a very relaxing Friday evening. I have my dog Luna for the weekend. I'm gonna get her to say hi to you guys actually because I know you guys absolutely love her, right? Wanna come say hi to the camera, Luna? There you go. All right. There, you guys can see her a little bit better during the day now, right? Now that it's really bright. She's uh, a six-year-old, half Pomeranian, half Yorkshire Terrier. <laughs> She's my buddy. So anyways, just thought I'd say hi to you guys, because I know a lot of you have been following me for a long time now. And you guys might have seen her on camera many times before, right? She likes to do her favorite thing where she lifts up her shirt and she goes, Dog's gone wild! Dog's gone wild! <laughs> Anyways, okay, so Lou and I are going to get into this technical analysis now, alright? So, if you have not seen this video of mine yet, I would highly recommend that you check it out. Just as a little bit of a reminder. It's called the back testing video. Right? This is one of the videos that was really popular because it was just like a testing methodology. Well, it's kind of like a system of back testing that can give you results. And of course, we're pattern traders. And that's what technical analysis is about. It's just recognizing things that have been happening in the past that may repeat itself because history tends to repeat itself, doesn't it? So let's just go into the quick review of that video, which I'll summarize for you. So it went something like this, okay? What we were doing was we were comparing what happens every time it crosses from the positive side. So for those that don't know, this is the MACD indicator, right? The Moving Average Convergence Divergence Indicator. On the MACD, it has three things on it. It has one, the histogram, and two, a moving, uh, a moving average. Actually, two, two, it has two moving averages on there. As a slow one, that's the 12, or sorry, the fast one, the 12, and the slow one, the 26. And the histogram is just a way of identifying if we're in the positive or the negative region, and which just generally how much we're ticking overall. It's kind of like a momentum gauge, you can, you can call it, right? And what I like about the histogram is that is, um, it's real time, put it that way. Real time momentum, rather than a crossover here, for example, you would want to buy right here, okay? Obviously, but this point right here, you're not going to be able to catch it. So these moving averages are called lagging indicators rather than real time because what these 12 and 26 refer to is it takes the sample of the past 12 bars and what the 26 refers to is it takes a sample of the past 26 bars and then it forms an average. But it requires data to come in and for example this point right here it really when you think about it it really indicates more like this point right this point indicates that the momentum has now rolled over and people use the crossover strategy but it just becomes too late because it's taking a sample of everything from the past because of that these crossovers generally happen too late so people don't always just buy on the, on the bottom right that's impossible to catch only the bottom so some people may see a big wick and they may get close to that region, maybe over here, for example, and they might add 25% of their size or something. And then with a little more confirmation, for example, during an actual crossover, they might add more on a small dip or on a breakout. So there's many different ways to trade. But what we were focusing on specifically, and this, it all has a big point, as you guys know, right? I've been optimizing my videos for your education. And every time something very relevant comes out, I'm always going to find examples to show you, just uh, show you proof by example, right? So what we were figuring out with XRP was what happens after it crosses from that positive side, 
to this negative side. So you see, this is the zero line. Do you see this? This is the axis of the zero, okay? Right here, this is the x-axis, and it goes, just just keeps going across, right? And, and, and that this is the y-axis. So this is in the positive quadrant of the y, right? Where this is the zero line of the y, but also the x-axis. And then the bottom here is the negative side of the x-axis, okay? Or sorry, of the y-axis. So everything down here is negative, and everything up there is positive. Make sense? So now what we want to do is identify these specific key points of when they cross over. And we'll make this yellow or something, just for a clearer picture. Okay? We'll call it like this, this yellow right here. That's one crossover, obviously. And this was back in way in, you know, 20, 2018 March or something, right? In the big bear market. And the next one was most likely right here. And I made this video on YouTube with that back testing methodology at this specific point in the next one right here. Right there, right? I, I was actually making it right around there. That's the time frame of when the video came out. But the reason I did it was because we were looking at three different points here, right? We're talking about, like, when I see the crossover, I'm talking about there, and I, I mean more so mean like this specific region where everything happens, right? See what I'm talking about? Okay. So this is when we're saying it's going from the green positive to the red negative. Now, we're not concerned about what it actually crossed over. What we're concerned about is what happens the first time it recrosses back up. So we, we acknowledge that, hey, it's going down. It's going down. It's going down. It's crossing over. And then what we're trying to figure out is a big question mark for we're trying to figure out ahead of time to anticipate the crossover back up. And here's where it's about to cross back up. And here is where it was going to cross back up as well. Okay, and it did. Now, we want to figure out a big question mark. I don't think I have a question mark on here. But if I had one, I would just put it up there. I'll just do this. Big question mark like that, right? What the heck is going to happen during the crossover? And can we actually catch it right around this yellow box? Okay, now what we want to say to ourselves is this. What happens during that first crossover? So step one goes something like this. Okay, so one, we have crossed from the positive side. All right, and we're talking about just basically MACD, right? Like kind of like that. We're talking about just going from there to here, what happens? From the positive side on the histogram MACD to the negative side. Now we ask the question: What happens when it crosses back from the negative, from negative now to the positive for the first time? That's what we want to catch, right? This is kind of our our way that we're testing the past and if it has held true thus far. So now we have crossed from the positive side on the histogram slash back D to the negative side. Second step is we question what happens when it crosses back from the negative to the positive for the first time. So now that we got all of this out of the way, okay, you guys kind of get the idea of where I'm getting to now is this. Well, what happened the first crossover? Let's just draw some lines here, just so we know what section we're talking about. Right around there, right? You can see, I'm just drawing these vertical lines, so it lines up, right? Like, right, right so we've got an idea of what, where we're working. Oops. The next one would probably be right around, like, you know, around there. So let's just, just make sure where we got this right. So yeah, that's right around the cro first crossover, right? Here is where we're starting to anticipate the crossover. And here is where, you know, about to anticipate the crossover as well. So we're in the right sections. Now that we've isolated and we know what happens, now let's compare in that section. So now we've established the foundation and that on the three-day chart, crossovers happen, right? 
and we're establishing the fact that it's going from positive to negative, now we're questioning what happens when it now goes from negative to positive. Well, let's check it out together here as proof in the pudding. So the first crossover went up about 110%. Yes, you guys heard that, right? 110%. That's right. Now, the next case is, well, once again, the only cases we can take is what happens only when it crosses, it crosses from the top to the bottom. Okay, It has to do that first. Not when it's already in the bottom and then it crosses back up. That's not a fair case to say. So the next one right here would be uh, pretty monstrous as well. This one here ended up spiking how much? This one ended up spiking 62% now, okay? And the third one ended up really spiking as well. This is where the original crossover happened and this one went up 32%. So now we have confirmed with 100% accuracy that 100% of the time on XRP, it whenever it crosses over from the negative side, or sorry, positive to negative, when it's about to cross back up again, it does some monstrous gains. 110%, 61%, and 32%. Can anybody argue against that? No, they can't. I've literally just proven it. And this has go this goes back two years, okay guys. You just can't argue against a two-year fact like that, right? So it's an irrefutable piece of evidence. Therefore, how can we not assume that XRP, every time it happens like this, it wouldn't happen again, right? And this is just not XRP. I'm just giving you guys an idea of what we're about to transition to, to Bitcoin right now. Now, let's see if we can use the same methodology and a just hypothesis to see if, what happens. WTF happens. Now, Bitcoin hasn't been around for a long time, obviously, right? Like 12 years is not that long, to be quite honest. Okay, so now let's just check out some of this right here. All right, and we can go back pretty far if you guys want. Like we can go back really freaking far, guys. Um, yeah, let, let me show you guys what, how far back we'll go, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna do this in front of each other or with each other. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys ever. I've never done the back testing yet for Bitcoin, and I wanted to do it live in front of you just to show you kind of the methodology that I'm gonna be using. So first of all, I'm gonna isolate this, and I'm gonna say to myself, clearly this is the first sections of the crossover, right? And clearly that is where it happened for the first time. This is back in 2014, guys, five years ago. We're not gonna go further than that. So that, it went from the positive to the negative, yes. And this is the first crossover right here. So let's just line up and see how far it actually ended up going. So this first one, ends up going up from the crossover right here. This is the area, yes? First one. So this one ended up firstly going, we'll just take this sample right here. Uh, this one went up 59%, okay? Now the next one, where it goes up to the positive, to the negative, is about right here. And the first one that happens where it reaches right around there is pretty significant, right? So this one here is right around this region, you can say. Yes. So now we check out how much it moved upwards. And this one now moves 48% upwards. Now it's in the negative, negative, negative. Where is in the positive next? Where it comes down. That's the next one right there. Okay. This region crosses over back up right around there. And how much does this one do for the first simple run? It does like a 123% run, or rather 120%. Now we're always in the positive side. We're looking for it to go back down to the negative. And now it doesn't go back down to the negative at all. It has never gone down to the negative since September 28th of 2015 which is four years and one month ago. That is right. 
right? About, well, since, like, from this day, rather, until recently, okay? Or actually, I shouldn't say four years. It's actually been about um, a little bit over two and a half. And I stand corrected there because we did get into that bear market, right? So now we're going to take a look at the first one where it crosses back down, okay? Right here would have been, this was like a fake out. People would have bought it on this one. So this one here, I would definitely consider it one right there, okay, guys? You guys hear my rung tone? Give me a second, my friend's calling. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, so this is one of the first ones. And the area is right around there. You can see the crossover a little bit before. Okay. So right around there, you know. And it wasn't really the biggest one. You can say, actually, would you even want to consider this one it? I don't think I want to consider that one. Okay. Because it, if it's not fair for us to say I would have. Because we didn't. It didn't cross back to the positive side. So it would be very wrong for me to make that assumption. But a counter argument to that would be that it really, you would have prepared before then, right around there maybe, because you, you would have noticed it, like being, well, this, you know, huge candle there on the three day. We knew February 6th was the end of the bull market for, for that specific time, and then we launched into a bear market and did like 100% gains or something, right? Almost. So that was awesome. So this one I'm on the fence about. If I would have considered it or not, if you use specifically the three-day moving average strategy, no, then we have to disqualify that, okay? So now let's be true to our original statements of only when it crosses from the negative or positive to the negative. Therefore, the first one would have been here. And remember that in hindsight, you wouldn't, you know that it crossed over. But if you were in this position here where it didn't, you still would have been prepared. You would have been looking at it. You would have been looking for retracements after this one here. Therefore, now I might even need to retract what I said about not accepting it, right? So this can go both ways sometimes. And you will find yourself arguing with yourself. So this one, I'll leave it up to you guys for interpretation. And the next one would be definitely here, obviously, right? Now, in hindsight, we know it crossed over right around here. Now we look at the regions around where it crossed over. It would be roughly like around there, you can say. Okay. Right? So this one, how much of a percentage gain did it do on Bitcoin? Did 55%, it's very respectable. And now let's go for the next one, where we never actually got back to the positive side. Do you know that? Never got back there since we came down in like February, since the bear, mar since the, since the bear market began on December 17 of 2017, we have never ever, uh, and, then, and then when the bear market ended, right? On February the 6th, right we and we crossed over officially like you know like around february 6th we'll say and since then we have never been in the positive side until about april 1st so therefore if we measure this time we are talking about 420 days that it that this that the official bear market was in for that long you can say right because of the lulls and stuff like that so that was kind of um you know, now that we're more positive on this side, we can gauge it again. So now you take a look at this as well. You take a look at this where it, you know, that's the whole region. And we have been, have you guys, do you guys remember my tweets, man? Like, they have been deadly by accuracy, guys. <laughs> Let me just show you, like, one on October 21st, okay, guys? I started calling this, um, it's been a, it's been called, guys, okay? On the 21st, I wrote this right here for you guys, okay? Two-day histogram slash MACD may cross over for the first, second time in two years, potentially rallying hard. And of course, our rally started three days later, four days later, okay? And then I made this awesome tweet as well of the support. You guys remember that? While it was still 7,600, next support range is between around 74 and 76-ish, right? And um, sure enough, we dip about 100 bucks below that only. And then this all came to fruition because of the confluent reasons that we're finding with the two day, with the three day, with the RSI as well, right? There have been many factors that have been adding up to this rally. 
And it was very much so anticipated, in my opinion. And we're traders, right? What we do is we try to find... Do you guys still see Luna on my lap? She's like the best dog ever, seriously. She's resting her head on my armrest right here. It's like friggin' adorable, actually. Okay, you want to sleep on Dad's chest? You want to sleep like that? Okay. You're being so cranky today, little Luna. <laughs> yeah, I miss having her around. I'm sorry, I forgot what I was saying, honestly. Okay, so this is... <laughs> I really don't remember what I was talking about. Don't try to lick my face right now. I'm in the middle of working, Luna. You're such an inconsiderate work pet dog. Don't lick my face, Luna. You have really bad breath today. You want some Mentos? I got some Mentos here for dogs. <laughs> okay, so this MACD, this is the region right here. And you know, you know what gave it away as well, guys? Like, just so many different factors where if you see on the three days slightly rising up like that, and you're seeing the, you know, like a double bounce on RSI basically. These are very prominent numbers. I mean, you take a look right here. We got a double bottom there. But on the two day, it's just gaining strength. We got a higher low, barely, but that still counts on the two day. On the weekly, we're getting higher lows consistently. Higher low, higher low, right? And this formation, in my opinion, is more so set up to break to the upside rather than down right now as well. I gotta refresh this. Sometimes the chart loses the numbers on the side there. I always try to make my technical analysis videos short, but they always end up getting very long because there's always a lot of details. So yeah. Anyways. So yeah, so look what happened right here. After all of these reasons of why they're going up, right? Like you're getting once again higher lows on everything basically. Double bottom here in the 12 hour, higher low, higher low than the first. So, was it unexpected this rally? No. Was it expected of this caliber? Definitely not. This was a shock to everybody, I'm sure. But it was nearing that time where we were just too low in our side and everything, and uh, it was just bound to happen, okay? And you know what's really cool about, for example, this specific part right here? Actually, where is it? Um, on the three-day, okay? Like, I was worried at first that if this RSI here got, for example, if this RSI right there, right, right, these points were way higher than the, the bull rally, okay, that where we reached the December the 17th, that could have been a continuation, a sign of continuation to the downside, okay? Remember what we were talking about with bearish divergence versus hidden bearish divergence? Hidden bearish divergence, it looks for continuations to the downside. Hidden bullish divergence looks for continuations of a rally to go upwards. But for a hidden bearish divergence, you're comparing the highs, okay? It basically goes like this. The next peak, if it is a lower high, which this one clearly is, than, than these two that I'm comparing. This is clearly a lower high. But, if the RSI is actually higher at this specific peak right there, than that one, it's counterintuitive, right? This one is lower, but if the RSI is higher than the previous one, then that could be a continuation of a downside. So to me, because the RSI didn't actually spike past it at all, this one, uh, it means to me that it's not a continuation to the downside, which is phenomenal in my eyes, okay? Also, if you go really far back, okay? So also if you go really far back as well. So now we just briefly talked about hidden bearish divergence and how we were comparing the highs, right? And, and the high uh, price, it's a lower high for price, but a higher high for the indicator that that is considered a hidden bearish divergence which could confirm a continuation on the downside but we didn't see this happen so because we didn't see this happen now we say to ourselves can we test the opposite of is there a hidden bullish divergence now okay all right well let's test it together so the definition of a hidden bullish divergence 
would be to compare the lows first of all okay the lows right so this one so the next point of a low has to be a higher low than the previous point so for example here it's clearly a higher low than, th than these regions right yeah so the criteria is check so we say this if this right here has a higher low than the previous low right a higher low in general but the RSI is actually lower than the previous one okay so if it's actually lower once again than the previous one then that is now considered a hidden bullish divergence now we're gonna say to ourselves well right around these regions who's got the lowest RSI basically and it would be this guy right here where we recently were at true this is all the way back to 2014 folks so 23 R or 18 RSI here versus about 22 ish here so check mark therefore we say to ourselves all right this point is a higher low than here and the RSI is actually lower than the previous point therefore it fits the criteria of a hidden bullish divergence okay so we're finding many factors right now to basically say that we're possibly in a bull market I'm gonna say we're in a bull market short to medium term right now and I'm not factoring retracements you know the thousand dollars or something whatever just based on all these signs how could anybody not say that right now I would love for someone to show me right now that this is a continuation to the downside I just can't find any evidence on it at all I mean look at the weekly guys the weekly is it's on a rampage okay like let me just explain to you guys the concepts of this right here of the weekly okay so sell-off capitulation happened it was beautiful to see this happen because it almost reminded me of a small version of what happened prior to December uh, prior to February the 6th okay you know whatever you want to call that you could make that a descending triangle oh, sure I probably make this a descending triangle of some sort like that and I'm sure higher up it would be looking something like this maybe right I'm just doing it very briefly if you compare it to for example here it's really not that much different at all either right it's it's really not at all and anybody who says it is yeah <laughs> so that structure kind of reminded me of the potential breakdown and it was magnificent to see that it took how long to break down here it took about three months to break down and of course we broke down from it right so now the way that the weekly is is like this the weekly chart here first of all got a bearish inverted hammer so this is what an inverted hammer looks like okay it's usually in the bottom right here okay now it's on the bottom so something like that where there's a wick poking more to the upside than the downside and there's barely any wick on the downside now think of a hammer and just flip it upside down that's it right if it is red now the psychology of the red candle is very interesting we're going to talk about two different structures right now. This is really important. Everything I say is really important to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Luna agrees. Everything my dad says is very important. <laughs> All right, okay. So here is a... No, that's not an inverted hammer. Think of the Thor's hammer like that. There's one. And we're just going to make another one right here. There's two but we're gonna make this one green okay okay now let's talk about these two so first of all you gotta know what the open and the close is okay that's that's really important to understand this is the open this is the O this is the high this is the close and the low close and low C and L okay whereas over here okay it opened here it opened there 
and open yeah it, and it closed and this one's also the low right the open is also the low and the L this one here is the close now and this here now let's talk about the psychology of this of how you should interpret it or how I interpret it and this here is the high now what is the difference between these two so one's green one's red so one it opened up here and it closed down there okay that's that's right Luna. you're absolutely right I agree with you but I don't think that you should try to teach the class because it's my frickin' thunder, Luna, and I don't need you raining on my parade, okay? I know that you taught me everything I knew, but I just don't think that because you're a guest star, you should just jump back into the game right away. You haven't been trading in over a year now, Luna. What's wrong with you? Maybe two years now since you've even touched the computer? You don't even know how to trade anymore, Luna. All you do is just, you just try to get alcohol from grandma and grandpa, and like, no joke, you gotta stop drinking, Luna. Like, it's really unhealthy for you. I know that you're still trying to use all my followers to get like crypto fun right now from them and I bet you have your own Instagram and Twitter too Luna where you're trying to message my followers and pretending to be me and you're like hey any money for my alcohol fund we're done those days Luna there's gonna be no more alcohol fund with crypto at all now if you want to do that you gotta do that outside of this house because I'm just not tolerating it anymore okay do you understand Luna This is who I have to deal with all day. Let me show you guys her. She's actually um very deceiving. Girls gone wild. This is how small she is, guys. She's about six pounds. She's tiny. My mom cut her hair. She looks like a little rat now. Sorry that you guys had to hear that very personal family conversation I just had with my little puppy there. <laughs> I'm just joking around. I hope you guys know that, okay? All right. So now let's get back into this. This is the open. So this one here is obviously more bearish than that one. Okay? So the open is here where the first candle started that week. And then the bulls tried to push it up here first. So this is what happens first, okay? The first is opens up there. Like, what's this? Actually, I won't even write. It opens here. And then the bulls have pushed it up, pushed it up, pushed it up. But the bears simply push it all the way back down to the opening and then it eventually reaches a low where it now closed as well. Okay, so it finishes off or it starts off strong where the bulls, hurrah, they're pushing, right? They're pushing up, but say halfway through the week or something, the bulls ended up losing the fight because the bears kept pushing them down, kept pushing them down, and pushed them down really far, further <clears throat> than where they actually even began, okay? But the significant thing of that is that the bulls have created such an effort to rally, and that is why we get the wick. That's really important, right? So the significant thing is the bulls tried really hard, but the point is they tried, even though they failed initially, okay? Here is a different story of night and day. Now, it opens here, and it also is the low, right? And throughout the whole day, right? Throughout the whole day, or, or week rather, the bulls could have been, they were pushing it all the way back up. But one of two things happened, or could have happened, right? Right? Uh, one thing that could have happened was, yeah, the bulls lost the race, they lost the, the battle because the bears pushed them all the way back down, right? But the point is they didn't push them down further than the, where they began. They actually pushed them to a relatively good price point. And the point of this race here is that it wasn't pushed down further than where they began. Meaning they actually held some of their ground or made ground. Now the second thing that could have happened in this case is the bulls lost the race. They got back up to the... Um, to the you know back up to here for example 
or they, they went all the way back down to the low actually. Let's say they pushed it all week, went all the way back down, but maybe by the end of the week, they pushed it back up. So that could have happened as well, where they fought, lost, and then by the end of the week, they, they actually stood up for themselves again, and then they closed here. So do you see the significance between the two, right? Now, imagine if you saw a combination of these things happening. Yeah, seriously. Let's say you saw it on a weekly on the 55 moving average right here. That's basically an inverted hammer, guys. Right there, right? But this was the bearish one that happened the first time, right? It was still bullish, but it's more bearish because it's red, first of all. And we're, and we're you know, but it's a bullish, it's, it's still um, an inverted hammer and it's on the 55 EMA. Confluent. Now, the second week, they, this is what the bulls did. They're like, man, we're actually going to do the exact same thing. Like, the same thing happened, but they made way more ground, right? That's why now we got this inverted hammer that's basically green rather than red. Ah, you guys are catching on now, right? And then next week, what do we do? We get a beautiful little doji candle. These doji candles or like a dragonfly doji type thing, they are beautiful. I'm not kidding you guys. Whenever you see these kind of candles at the bottom of a really huge downtrend, it's fairly significant sometimes. Or at an uptrend that you see it up there, it might symbolize that, hey, it, you know, the bulls might start to be losing. And on the downside, it might symbolize the bears are starting to lose and the bulls have found stability and support. So... Now that, you know, I'm just talking and reviewing about how and giving you reasons why I think that we're in a semi-bull market right now, whether it's, you know, short or medium term, because of all these confluent factors that we're finding. So I just wanted to review kind of the, the month end really well and give you guys my general thoughts and direction. And um, in terms of price points and predictions, that's going to come maybe later tonight or tomorrow, and I'll give you guys a much more broad and on a much better scope as well of just the overall picture of what I think. So anyways, guys, I wanted to keep it fairly short today for now. It's 2 p.m. already. <laughs> it actually took me over... Uh, I actually started filming this at 1. It took me... Um, actually, like 12.30. It took me a while to film this today. But I want to make sure that I'm delivering very good content for you guys. So yeah, this marks the end of the video. If you guys um, are still interested in my courses, man, let me know. Especially if you want to go buy crypto there. Or I'm um, go pay by crypto, I man. Like I'll be more than happy to t accommodate you guys with a deal. I don't think I'll be having it around next year, to be quite honest. Just too many people to manage right now, and um, I'm gonna take it down probably. But of course, it's still gonna be up for all the people that have access to it already. I'm just not gonna allow any new students to come in. Simple as that, right? So I would suggest to maybe be interested if you are. And um, yeah, it's helped a lot, a lot of people, and I'm always available on Twitter to answer as many questions as I can, as you guys know, right? And I, I suck at answering questions on Udemy, guys. Their platform sucks for question and answers. Their app is crappy. And um, just reach out to me on Twitter, man. You guys would be surprised at how I respond to people. I respond to people with very detailed video responses. Whether it's a personal question or something about the market or a coin. Like, I, I record just like this on my phone or whatever. And I give you guys very detailed responses. And if you guys are still interested in the swag, I'm going to be wearing this all winter, guys. It is so comfortable. Check it out, man. Like, when you put the hoodie on, like, it's actually, like, it fits so well around you. <clears throat> it's a Bellas and Canvas style. So it's a, uh, or Bella and Canvas style. So it's just so soft and it wraps around your body. And it's, uh, it's not the thickest, I have to admit. Like, you don't want to wear it outside as your main sweater. But, like, just going outside, um, or, you know, like, wearing it underneath a bunch of things, it's, it's actually not bad at all. So if you guys are interested in it, you guys can be like Luna and, uh, you know, and get some of the merch. 10% of it takes care of no-kill shelter. It's going go to go donate to that or the profits. And the other 90% is going to go towards uh, just buying more t-shirts so I can give it away. So I don't really plan to make a dollar off of it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll keep $10 here and there to buy Luna some alcohol. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But she's pretty. She's a pretty good dog. She can sleep on my chest like this, like a baby, for about eight hours, and she won't even move unless she needs to go to the bathroom. So, just wanted to say hi to you guys once again and um, give you guys a great technical analysis. If you guys are interested in some of the like T-shirt or whatever, or the hoodie, just take a look in the link below there. And they're refundable, guys. If you don't like it, just send them back to me. You guys pay for the shipping, but I'll gladly refund it back to you. Like, it's no issues at all on my end. So yeah. Anyways, just want to say hi once again. Luna, want to say bye to the viewers? You want to say bye to them? 
you know, you just want to sleep on dad's chest, right? Okay, guys, have yourselves a fantastic day. I hope you enjoy the weekend with your family and your friends and loved ones and do something new and exciting always because life is too boring to be spun to be or life is too short to be boring so always be spontaneous and interesting so have a great day guys take care now bye